the secret to tuning is experimentation. You can't do anything wrong. The worst thing you can do is ruin a head. Okay, granted, if it's a bass drum head, you could be looking at 30, 40, 50 quid. Um, but as long as you tension the head evenly, both sides, small increments, small little turns, both at the same time with two keys, you'll be fine. There isn't anything you can mess up. So for this video, you're gonna need two keys, your favorite drumstick, and obviously a snare drum. So let's get started. Okay guys, here we have the shell to the drum that I'm gonna tune. I've taken both heads off. I've taken the snare wires off. And um, when you've got your drum in this stage, it's always good to make sure that all of these nuts that hold the tube lug board, in this case the tube lug boxes or the nut boxes on, make sure they're tight, make sure there's no really bad dents or anything in the um, in the bearing edges. Uh, the bearing edges is just basically the edge of the drum where the, the skin sits over, the drum skin sits over. Um, and just generally make sure there's no damage to the inside of the shell. Um, on this one it's very unlikely, but make sure there isn't anything cracked on the shell, especially if you've got a wood drum, it gives you a good chance to investigate the inside. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the bottom resonant head on. Uh, the heads I use are the Remo Ambassador snare side. You want to get the head and you want to make sure it's seated centrally. There's no point putting a head on over one side or over the other side because it's going to deform the head um, quicker than it needs to. So make sure the head's seated nice and evenly. Then we're going to put the hoop on, the bottom hoop, like so. Now at this point my first tip would be, if your drum doesn't have nylon washers on the tension bolts, get some. You can buy them from your local shop, you can buy them from eBay. Um, what this does is it limits the amount of shock that goes through each one of these bolts. And you can imagine if you've got shock going through the drum from here, if you don't have these washers, the shock can go into the bolt and it can slowly work its way loose and you'll end up with a, a bottom head like that or, or worst case scenario, they'll fall out when you're on the gig. You won't know where they are and you can't tune your head back up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of these bolts in and I'm gonna tension them down until they're just sitting on the actual um, tension rod hole and then uh, I'll explain um, how we tighten them up. So really they're just going to be going finger tight at the moment. So um, I'll do, I'll go around and do that now. Okay, now the bottom head is on, nice and loose as you can see. What the idea now is to tension opposites in slow in small increments do this slowly because you get this right at the beginning your snare drum will sound great if you just crank one side down it, what it will do is pull the head over and essentially your drum will never sound good and the head will be shot as soon as you start so even and I'm just going to do half turns then go to opposites half turn. Opposite again, half turn. Opposite again, half turn. And then just basically go all the way around and what you'll see me doing is pushing in the center of the drum as I'm doing it just to make sure that it is sitting in the middle. Uh, and we'll get to the point and you'll show me, you may see me tapping as I'm going around just to make sure they're all equal tension and I'll go through that bit um, after I've tightened these up. So we'll do that first. Okay, so the bottom head now is pretty much tensioned. When you're looking for somewhere for this head to sit as far as um, pitch, somewhere around an A is usually a good place to start. If you've got a guitar, if you've got a pitch tuner or anything like that, an A is roughly, if it's a little bit lower or a little bit higher, it doesn't matter, this is not a hard and fast rule, but usually an A is fairly good. 
task. Once you get it, um, for purposes of the video, I've got to kind of, you know, do this quite quickly. Otherwise, it's going to be a half an hour video on just snare tuning. But essentially what we need to do now is check to see whether all of these are, t are the same tension. Now, on the bottom head, on the actual shell of the drum, you've got what they call uh, a snare bed. And it's where there's a slight dip in the actual shell. And that's to accommodate the snare wires. So the bottom head, you're never going to get all of the lugs the same. You'll usually find that, th that sort of this one here will be high. These ones here will be lower. Um, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. High, low, high, low, high, low. That's fine as long as you get them all roughly the same. So you'll go high, slightly lower, then lower. High, slightly lower, then lower. You're never going to get them the same, especially if you're using a die cast hoop. This is a very, very solid hoop. There's two different types of hoop. You've got a die cast hoop, which is always like this, and it's cast from, well, from a die, but it's one piece, usually thick, very rigid. Um, and then you'll get a triple flanged hoop, which has a little bit more flex to it. So you'll probably stand a better chance of getting them all the same if you've got a triple flanged hoop. I'm happy with this. This sounds, this is a good place to start. You can always come back to the bottom head afterwards. I'll show you how to do that. So now we're going to flip the drum over and we're going to put the top batter head on. Then we're going to put the hoop on and we're going to tighten all of the tension rods to finger tight. Now the reason you don't see me at the beginning tighten these with my fingers is because I put an ever I put a very small drop of non-permanent Loctite on the tension bolts. A very, very, very small drop. This also helps to stop the the, um, the, the tension rods from detuning when you're when you're banging it quite hard. This drum I always use live, and the last thing you want is it detuning. So. Uh, for the sake of a couple of quid, it's the non-permanent. Don't go putting permanent Loctite in these because you will mess the drum up forever. It will be in extremely difficult to get that out. So a very, very small bit of non-permanent Loctite, which just stops the threads from loosening too much, which is why it's very difficult for me to tighten these with my fingers. So you'll see me using the key, but I'm only getting them to finger tight. Okay, so turn the drum over, top head on, hoop, tension rods to finger tight, and then we'll we'll um we'll go from there. Okay, now we've got the top head on. Um, just for your information, this is a Remo coated controlled sound. It's basically pretty much an ambassador, and it has a dot on the underside of the drum, which gives it um, much more durability, and it, it, well, it controls the sound, as it said. It takes a bit of the overtones away from the drum. I don't mind a bit of ringing on my snares, but I, I'm one of those people that likes quite the dry snare sound. Um, always have done. Um, so yeah, controlled sounds. So now, you can see this head is very loose. It's every, every tension rug, tension lug, is finger tight. Now what we're going to do is the same as we did on the bottom. Opposites, half a turn. Opposites, half a turn. Opposites, half a turn. Opposites, half a turn. And opposites, half a turn. And I'm just going to go around and get this into um, a ballpark kind of tuning. If you were tuning the bottom to an A, you'd probably tune this um, well, you can tune this however you want. I'd usually tune it at about the same, to be honest, or maybe a little bit lower. So I'm just going to do that now. Again, you're going to see me pushing in the middle just to make sure that the skin, the drum head, sits nice and evenly when it's being tensioned down. And also banging on each uh, node point. These are these points where the tension bolts are, are called node points. Um, just to make sure they're all even as we go along. So uh, I'm going to do that now and then uh, we'll see. Hopefully we should have a fairly in tune head. Okay, so now the top head is on. It's tensioned pretty much to where I think it's going to be. Now, when I was tuning, you can probably see I was going a little bit more than half a turn. This is all, this head has already been seated to this drum before, so it's going to pretty much, as long as I don't crank down one side, it's going to go on the same as it came off. If you've got new heads, then literally just, you know, half a turn, quarter of a turn, just take your time. 
these heads these days are not cheap, you know, and, and they're going to get more and more expensive as time goes on. So take care of your, your, your 15 quid investment. Um, put it on right the first time and then you, you just have a beautiful sounding drum um, for, for as long as the skin lasts. Now what we're going to do is turn the drum over and put the snare wires on, explain a little bit about the snare wires, and then hopefully we should have a reasonably in tune drum and then we can just tweak it if we need to. So uh, snare wires on the bottom. Okay, um, snare wires we're now going to put on the bottom. These are pure sound blasters. Um, I find for this drum these are about the best. They're, they're pretty robust, they're quite reliable, um, and it's not I don't really use this drum to record, so I don't need to spend you know, 30 quid on a set of wires, a set of snare wires. Some people say, oh, you know, snare wires, you shouldn't pay 30 quid for snare wires, they're all the same. They're not all the same, they're very, very different. And in this day and age, with the technology that drum companies have, you get what you pay for. If you want to buy um, nasty steel snare wires for nine pounds, you're going to get a nasty snail, steel cheap sound. If you want to pay for decent snare wires, you're going to get a decent sound. Okay. Obviously, there's no point in putting 30 pound snare wires on an 80 pound drum. It's not going to achieve anything. But um, you do get what you pay for. The only thing to note, or one thing to note before we go any further, is I don't use wires or string. Um, I'm personally of the mind that things get better with age, uh, they, you know, technology gets better. Um, I'm not really one of the purists. Um, I prefer straps, they're convenient, they're easy. Um, I understand that with snare wires you get a certain, of a certain amount of lateral adjustment, but if you put straps on carefully, you'll get the, the same amount of adjustment within reason. No one puts their snare wires on like that anyway. You know, they're usually on pretty straight. And also with straps, with string, it stretches, it wears out a lot quicker, so I prefer to use straps. I don't use the straps that come with them. They're too rigid, they're too thick. I don't feel that they conform to the edge of the head as easily. I, pre I prefer to use ribbon. Okay, this is, you know, flash ribbon, but just normal black ribbon. Um, measure how wide, usually about 18 mil, something around that region, uh, ribbon will do. Don't get anything too thick, just get some nice thin silk cotton ribbon and you'll be fine. So, the first thing I need to do is put this side in. Excellent, okay. Now what I usually do, if I move this around so you can see, is I usually hold the snares at one end and at the other end and I get it central and then I will hand tighten so I can put a bit of tension on here, I can pull with a bit of tension, but the strainer will still, sorry, the straps will still come through. And then I get them so nice and even, and nice and straight. And make sure that the two clips are sitting in the centre of the drum, which would be about there put a bit of tension on it so it's nice and straight and then while I'm holding the tension on I will tighten this side down what this does is make sure that goes on straight and it's always going to be in the center of the drum now if you're continually pulling this way which you are because this is where the adjustment is the snare wires are going to stretch and they're going to stretch this way so make sure you have you know just a couple of mil more adjustment at this end okay that's now done. Simple. That, that wasn't difficult. Let's try the other side. The other side is a slightly different method. When I pass the, pass the snare straps or ribbon, whatever you're using, through the same way. So now that's through. Make sure the snares are in the off position, which if you've got the drum, upside down would be, if you've got the drum upside down, the off position would be up. Okay, you want to get them nice and central, and then the same thing, you want to tighten them, but not all the way, so that there's a little bit of give, and then make sure your adjuster is pretty much out as much as it will go. Give them a good tug, and then all I do 
is throw it down or throw it up, depending on which way you're looking at it. So now the snare mechanism is on, then I'll tighten this right up, and that's it, done. So when you turn it over, all you need to do now is tighten it up a bit, and you've got your snares done. Obviously you can spend as much time or as little time doing this as possible, and um, that doesn't sound too bad. Usually I have some form of muffling on the drum, especially if I'm recording. There you go. Um, obviously you want to spend a bit more time on this, um, this is just a quick overview so that you know you, it's very easy to do, you can't mess anything up. If you've got new heads, take your time, if you've got new snare wires, take your time. But essentially that's it. I'm going to show you a couple of other drums. This is a very standard way of throwing the snares on and off, down, up. Um, there's a couple of other designs that I've got that I just want to show you that are slightly different, um, maybe something to look out for when you when you're deciding to buy a drum. So uh, we'll just cut away and show you a couple of different drums. Okay, this is uh, another drum. This is a Mapex Black Panther. It's the Walnut, the uh, 14 by 6.5 um, Walnut Deep Forest. You'll notice straight away something different about this drum. It doesn't have a standard hoop. These are called S-hoops. Um, I believe somewhere, there we go. The company logo. S-hoops. Um, I, I, I use on my snare drums. I don't use them on toms or anything like that. There are artists that use them on all their drums. I think Gavin Harrison um, is a big fan of S hoops. And essentially what these are is halfway between a triple flanged hoop and a die cast hoop. They have the flexibility of a triple flanged hoop, um, but they have the focus of a die cast hoop. They're halfway between and they're absolutely fantastic. They really are good. On a wood drum especially, they really focus the sound. Um, great for recording. You get a great um, side st uh, cross stick sound on them as well. And um, as a bonus, if you're using these muffle rings, they hold the ring inside the drum and you can do whatever you want with them and it doesn't disappear. The only downside to S hoops is if you are playing live, nine out of 10 times, depending on what kind of gig you've got, You'll have a horrible sound man who will come along and want to clamp a microphone to the side of the drum. These will not hold the clamps for the microphones. So your horrible sound man who wants to damage your beautiful drum will have to toddle off and get a microphone stand, as he should do. Clamping things on the sides of drums um, will always affect the sound, depending on how tight they are. So if you're one of those people that likes a cowbell clamped to your floor tom, Bear in mind, if you clamp it too hard, then it is going to disrupt the sound of your floor tom. And the same goes for these. You know, I've been to gigs where I haven't had S hoops and they've wanted to put a, a mic on the top hoop and a mic on the bottom hoop for the bottom. It's not good for the hoops and it's not good for the drum. It, it, it does mess the sound up. It deforms the hoop, it deforms the shell. So anyway, what I wanted to show you on this drum um, mainly was the snare strainer. and. This is quite clever from Apex. It has a two-stage strainer. So that's stage one. It will sit there quite happily, and it's a very loose sound. And then stage two is fully on, and obviously that's the normal sound. You've obviously got your adjustment here, but the clever part is on the butt end, you've also got an adjuster. So if you're ever in a position where the snares are moving from one side to the other as they're stretching out, you can adjust from both sides and keep it central, which I think is a fantastic idea. Um, I'm just going to show you another drum now which has a very different strainer, um, but essentially, you know, the, the snare strainers are just, the, sorry, the snare uh, strainers are just there to pull the snares on and off. Um, there's, there's lots of different ones. You can get parallel action, which is where the whole bottom of the drum, the whole strainer uh, um, separates from the drum and takes all of the wires off at once completely. Um, and then there's also the free floating style which is a similar um, a similar option. The only thing I would say 
is the, the simpler the device, the more reliable usually it is. If you're on the road, maybe getting something with a very simple strainer will be the idea in case it breaks, you can fix it. If you've got a very exotic design and it goes wrong, you may have a bit of trouble getting parts for it. So I'm just gonna show you another strainer now on a different drum um, and then that's pretty much it. Okay, this is a Ludwig um, 14 by five uh, Black Beauty, which is brass with the, the, the black on the top, or black over brass, whatever you want to call it. This is a limited edition um, with the brass tube lugs and the brass die cast hoops top and bottom. It's also got the brass butt throw, and more importantly, it's got the brass P86 throw, as opposed to the usual P85. This looks very complicated, but it's quite simple. I've heard a lot of stories of these going wrong. I've had no problems with this. There is always a little bit of play on the top, but you never, I've never ever, ever heard this on a microphone. Um, and if it really bothers you that much, you can put a bit of black gaffer tape from there to there and it will just hold it rigid. But this works in a way, when you throw the top down, the bottom also moves down in a kind of parallel motion. And this is your way to adjust it like that. So that's the other way. Uh, like I say, there is plenty of them around. Um, so take your time, watch what you're picking, and hopefully that's given you a good insight into um, how to tune your snare. One last thing I'd like to say is the snare basket, the snare stand, this part, the basket that holds it, don't over tighten it, because it will have the same effect as someone clamping a microphone to your drum. It will choke the drum out, it will dry it up. It will, it, instead of sounding, like this, it will sound, it will squeeze it. Um, some people say, oh, it doesn't, it, I've recorded enough drums to know it does make a difference. If you really over tighten, you will um, affect the drum in some way. So keep it so that the drum is in the basket tight enough. So you can just, so it just pops out and then it can just pop back in and that's it, that's tight enough. So. Um, thanks for watching. Hopefully that should um, be a bit shorter. If you've got any questions, uh, please leave some comments, let me know. Other than that, um, go and tune your snares.